Applications of Probability in Finance Sector in Data Science Hi, I am M. Asif Hussain from Know How Academy. What are we going to learn in this video? We are going to understand how the finance sector is using probability. We are going to see the breakdown analysis with few practical examples. And in this end of the video, you are going to learn and understand how the applications of probability will be helpful in finance sector. So let's learn it. When I'm talking something about a finance sector, what is a finance? Finance sector, they probably deal with the numbers. Okay, most probably the numbers. Numbers, it might be anything. It might be the budget, it might be the stocks, it might be the uh, pricing, it might be some uh, any sort of numbers. All right. So when I'm talking about this finance, what we generally do, we predict the values of a future, right? We predict the values of multiple uh, scenarios or multiple events if we consider. So now let me just write you with one few practical example is the first one I would like to talk about the pricing. So when I'm talking about the pricing, it might be of anything, but let me take a practical example to make you understand much more better about this pricing. So we all know that you know somewhere or the other we might have heard it or somewhere or the other we might have experienced it. Something called as purchasing a property or purchasing a land, right? So when I'm talking about purchasing a property or purchasing a land, no land will be new, right? No property will be new. Some with, you know, it will be of somebody else in the past. Now from them, we are buying it. Am I right? From them, we are purchasing it. So now let us consider that as a scenario here and understand. So there are two people in this. One, the person who is selling the property. Number two, the person who is buying the property. As simple as such. So there are many consequences. There are many problems that these two people will face. The person who is selling the property also. The person who is buying the property also. Now what are the different challenges what's happening here? Is that the first part comes is the price. The pricing. If the first person who is selling the property, if he or she is quoting that the land property is some 50 lakhs, then the second person will not go and immediately sign the agreement with 50 lakhs, right? Some sort of negotiation will happen. So that is the first challenge. And the second challenge, the land, the locality of the land, the surroundings, the feasibility of the, you know, uh, of the market, the feasibility of the uh, supermarkets or the feasibility of the you know, vehicles or the feasibility of the uh, shopping, feasibility of schools, hospitals. We, we generally look into all these aspects when we are purchasing a land, right? So there are many challenges that's happening here. So when I'm talking about this land, so what's happening is that there will be an agreement which will happen at the end of the uh, complete challenges that we overcome and there will be an agreement that the person who is selling and the person who is buying. So now let's consider that there will be the probability. What is the probability that one person will at least buy the land? Okay, if not one customer, the second customer, if not the second customer, then the third customer will at least buy the land. Am I right? So no particular person who is selling the land or the property will depend on only one customer, one client. Am I right? So they approach multiple people. So whomever suits best for the pricing of the land, for them, we sell the land. Am I right? So now let's consider in the same way we have a land here and one person is selling the land and another person is buying the land and there is only one probability that only one person will buy the land right the probability is that there will be only one person who will be buying the land and there will be some sort of at least some five to ten percent of disadvantage to the person who is selling the property because the price that this person or uh, this uh, owner of the land is quoting no one will buy for that particular exact figure. There might be some two or three lakhs of difference, right? But ultimately that person is losing some two to three lakhs of rupees, right? So there's some sort of disadvantage will be there. Now let's consider that this land rather than selling from an individual perspective, what happens if this land is being sold by the you know real estate people by the ventures you know we have a lot of ventures where we have a lot of gated communities as well so where they construct the houses and they sell it they construct the villas and they sell it or they even sell the individual lands as well so now let's consider that we have some xyz uh, when you uh, know 
real estate uh, venture company and they have some premium access you know those people who purchase the premium of some 10000 rupees okay they will get some sort of discount or they will have some sort of uh, importance for the any villa land or home if they are purchasing it so let us consider that as a scenario so what do you think that this is going to help this person to uh, you know buy the land if some sort of premium is being accessed we have to think that one right so many people gives him this kind of offers but ultimately okay we are not going to have lot of benefits that what we are looking into with the same practical example let me relate this with another example which is related to a finance sector okay now let's consider that you know we all know about the stocks right many people we invest in the stocks so let's consider that there are uh, some 10 stocks that we would like to purchase it from a company called jio right so no one pass from today if we consider back 7 to 10 years no one knows what exactly is jio at that particular period right so now jio is in huge demand now right so now let us consider that we have to buy some 10 stocks of jio with a price of let us consider some 1100 dollars so now let's consider that today i have purchased this uh, stock of 1100 dollars from jio so let us consider from today till 10 days for the next 10 days we assume that there will be some 40 percent chance that this particular stock might increase to 1200 dollars okay in the worst case let us even consider that there will be the chance of 60 percent that this particular stock might even you know decrease or fall to around thousand dollars so let we should always think in the two ways right one is a positive and another is a negative so with the same analysis if we consider you know we are not sure about it but we are just assuming it so now just understand the breakdown analysis for this particular aspect so if we look into the breakdown analysis okay we are taking 10 stocks right of how much 1100 dollars or let us consider 11000 dollars or whatever it might be okay so now if it falls okay if it falls to uh, let us consider through thousand dollars from 10 days till today what is the pricing of this one will happen so how will the pricing of this one will happen let us consider if it is increasing to 40 percent with the 1200 dollars and if it is decreasing to 60 percent to uh, let us consider thousand dollars so what's happening here is that it is very obvious that by looking into if it is increasing if today or tomorrow or from uh, from today till 10 days if it is increasing to 1200 dollars okay obviously we have to go and you know immediately buy this one am i right that's where we are going to get the profit it's very simple am i right so now the point is that let us consider 10 dollars for the same calculation 10 into if we consider you know thousand dollars if this if this is the one then it is obviously ten thousand dollars am i right if it is ten thousand dollars right so now what's happening is that how much we have earlier the original price the original price we have is eleven thousand so obviously ten thousand is less than eleven thousand am i right so how much we are losing one thousand dollars we are losing am i right so that's where it is very obvious that 1200 is the best option to buy the deal not to buy the stock so this is the basic understanding so now let's understand you know much more easier what happens if the stock still goes down okay and if we are getting some negative values so we always denote the negative values with the minus sign as we all know that so now let's understand this much more better so now if we are getting the values in a negative if the stock is still going much more down obviously we are in a loss so if we are having you know 0.4 i mean 40 percent with 1200 dollars as a you know if the stock is going high then obviously we are in an advantage of you know thousand dollars am i right so or if it is getting a loss of 60 percent with you know thousand dollars then we are in a negative value right we are in a loss of minus thousand dollars am i right yes or no so now what is the expected payoff for this one so the expected payoff if it is zero then obviously it is negative and if the expected payoff is less than zero it is negative and if it is exactly equal to zero okay then it's a okay good deal so we are going to get the exact money how much we have you know paid for it or invested for it or if the expected payoff is greater than zero 
then it is an excellent deal am i right so now let's calculate this one so what happens the expected payoff is 60% into the negative value that we have minus plus 40% okay into so we are obviously in a more than it is greater than zero right it is greater than zero obviously it is an excellent deal we can go and purchase it right so now what investors we expect for example if i am investing not only in stocks let us consider in a life insurance as we have lic sbi aditya birla and we have many things right so when i'm investing some amount in it obviously i will expect that i will get some more than the money what i have invested right so what i'm expecting I am expecting the opportunity or I am expecting the money much more the money that I have invested in. So when I am talking about the probability in finance sector, we look into the probabilities. Probability that I might get much more money or I might get the profit with what I have invested or the probability that I might lose the money with what I have invested. So these kind of scenarios are many when we talk into the finance sector. So most probably if we talk into the companies where we deal with the stocks or uh, uh, deal with some budget issues yes everywhere we use the probability and this is one simple example that i have talked to you today in this video regarding the finance sector how probability will be helpful so that it will be better for us to understand when we are doing a projects in data science so thank you for choosing know how academy as your source for it knowledge we are always here to help you to navigate the tech world if you have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out. It's been a pleasure sharing this information with you. Stay curious and keep learning.